Hey guys, it's Courtney back from Wonder in English. Thank you guys so much for coming back to my channel. Today, I'm going to give you guys five book recommendations that will help you practice your English and also be entertaining. So let's get started. The first book is one that I'm currently reading with one of my students and it's called The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. I hope I said that right. So this is a short book. It is easy to read. That's why it's first. Start with this one. It's only 138 pages long. It's super, super nice. The words are easy. You won't have any problem understanding it. And it's actually an interesting book about life. So a ton of people recommend this book. You can see the Amazon reviews are very highly rated. And it's because it talks about wisdom from the Toltecs. So who are the Toltecs? So the Toltecs are an ancient Mexican civilization, just like the Aztecs. They had a lot of wisdom in their culture. And this author wanted to share that wisdom with us. He wanted to share the four important pathways or pieces of advice that he would give to people if they needed to have a better life. So the author calls it a practical guide to personal freedom. And I would agree with that. Again, the vocabulary is super easy, so you won't be challenged by that. And they're also going to be using a lot of metaphors. So you'll learn a lot of figurative language, not literal language. He'll talk about things in a way that is abstract. So in that way, you can challenge yourself but it will be easy to understand, I promise. The second book is a little bit harder, but equally popular. And it's something that we all are required to read typically in high school in the United States. And that is The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. I'm not sure if I said that right. I'm sure you've noticed he is not a native English speaker. This book was originally published in Portuguese, but it's become so popular that they've translated it into all languages around the world. I've read the book in English and it's such a nice book. I really remember liking it, although it's been a long time since I have read it. I remember learning lessons from it about life and just finding it to be a very interesting story. So the book is about a shepherd boy who leaves his flock and goes, travels all the way over to Egypt in search of treasure. But on the way, he discovers life. He discovers a lot of unique people and those people help him discover the treasure within himself. So it's a really profound book, also full of metaphors and figurative speech. The way that the author writes is in a very specific tone. This book is like a tale, something that you would tell generations after generations. And because of that, it has kind of a, not an old English, but it has a very wise kind of proverbial tone. So it's not in old English as in Shakespeare, which is very challenging to understand, but it's in a different type of English that is like a wise tale being told by your grandmother or an elder. So that might be a little bit challenging. There might be new vocabulary words as well. I'm actually quite positive that there will be new vocabulary words. This text is rich in description and will be really great in that way. However, the story itself is quite simple. So it'll be easy for you to follow along, even if there are some things here and there that you don't understand. Also keep in mind that all of these books have audiobooks available. So if you want to listen to them as well, you can listen and read along and get twice as much practice. The third book that I recommend is one of my favorites. I've listened to the audiobook version by the author and I found it to be really impactful and really profound. The title of it is Solve for Happy by Mo Gadot. And I might not be saying that correctly again. So actually his uh, first language I think is Egyptian Arabic. So he has a bit of an Egyptian English accent, but it's totally understandable to me anyway. And I'm sure it would be to you too. I recommend listening to this audiobook. And the reason being is because the message is very personal and sensitive. 
And I think that you really can understand that through his tone and through the passion in his voice. So it's a really impactful read and especially a listen. And honestly, I cried listening to it. So it is a long book. It's 368 pages and it's about how his son died and died in a way that just was completely avoidable and completely unnecessary. And it takes him through his life, through his father's life and how he came to face that and how he found happiness even after such a tragic event. And it's just, it's really wonderful because he talks about um, a lot about what it means to be human and how we make things way more complicated than they need to be. It will be challenging. He discusses a lot of esoteric topics, very abstract ideas, some kinds of topics that would be found maybe in physics books. For example, he talks about the concept of time. I had trouble understanding the idea that he was talking about although I could understand all of the words. So it might be challenging for you in that way, but it's such a good book. It's such an impactful book that it's worth reading and worth taking the time to understand and challenge yourself. So if you are advanced in English, check this book out. The fourth book is Lord of the Flies by William Golding. So this is also a short book, but I think that it's a little bit dense and difficult to understand because there are so many descriptions within the book. So it's only 189 pages, but they describe people and situations in such detail that you'll learn a lot of new vocabulary words and you might find it challenging in that way. So you'll learn new adverbs and adjectives like crazy. But the book is fascinating and I think that you'll really enjoy it. This is a book that I read in high school. I was required to read it and I loved it. And I don't remember all of it, but I do remember that it was about a bunch of English schoolboys that crashed onto an island and they were very young kids and there were no adults that survived. So they had to basically make their own community, their own colony on this island as kids. And let me just say, it did not go well. So they became quite savage and turned on each other and did some crazy, crazy things. So it's a really interesting book to read, probably unlike anything you've ever read before. So I definitely recommend checking it out. It's short, it's a challenge, and you can do it and you can learn a lot. The fifth book is another nonfiction book and it's called Atomic Habits by James Clear. So this book is 319 pages. I listened to it as an audiobook and I loved it. So I'm a writer and I honestly have to say that this was one of the most well-written books I have listened to or read in a very long time. The author is very good at choosing the correct word and the correct way to explain something. So I, I applaud him and I highly recommend checking it out because of that. So atomic habits are about how we can create and use habits that will impact our life in a big way. We live in a very outcome focused society. Even if you are talented, you can't succeed without having great habits. We think the thing that needs to change is the bank account or the test score or the number on the scale, but actually the thing that needs to change are the habits that precede those outcomes. They are the portion of your life that you can influence. You can be the architect of your habits rather than the victim of them. So what the author does is walk us through the science behind habits, how they're created, how they're kept, and he has really good points always backed by science and by stories. So the best part about this novel is that he weaves the both together using facts and science and his own anecdotes to make it interesting and accurate. It might be a little bit challenging because of the fact that he's using science. So there might be some unknown vocabulary for you guys. And I do think it's a little bit of a lengthier book. So the concepts themselves are not hard, 
but some of the terminology, some of the words and the length of it might be a little bit challenging. Okay, so those are all the recommendations I have for you guys. I hope that you get a chance to check them out. If you do, please leave a comment below. I would absolutely love to hear about you reading these books or any other books. If you have a recommendation, write that below. I would really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.